right. Well, everybody, welcome back to Nifty Dimensions. This is interview number four. Today we have with us the crazily synchronistic, amazing friend of mine, Mr. Freeman Fly. How's it going, man? Hey, good, man. I'll tell you, it's good to be here on Nifty Dimensions. I literally thought I was uh, going to just be a legendary creature. Yeah. Uh, somebody is going to have to pull out their black lotus and summon me. I, oh, I see. <laughs> damn <laughs> old school oh man if anybody saw the condition of my black lotus like i've been using this thing for years and years and years well i mean since the day it came out uh for those of you that don't know this is probably worth about 1800 dollars or something like that but not in this condition uh <laughs> <laughs> because right? i'm one that plays with my toys right like i'm a collector but you know believe me i'll use it right yeah I know you told me it's in pretty bad shape. Yeah, man. So it's good to have you on here. Uh, just so everybody knows the deal, Freeman and I are the co-founders of Nifty Dimensions. Um, we started this thing, I don't know, not too long ago. We thought up the idea when we were getting into making NFTs and on foundation and growing this thing as far as our interest and all. So yeah, just to let everybody know what's going on. I, I think it's a, it's a really cool thing we started here and I, I'm excited to get into some some new stuff with you absolutely yeah this was necessary and i hope that the nft artists and the developers will see the value in nifty dimensions and want to come on and share uh all that they've got so that we can start to understand this new world of blockchain that we're, we're starting to deal with yeah definitely yeah I'm, I'm glad luckily a couple of artists nft artists that i've been um talking to lightly on twitter um, and non non fungible tarantulas and um, odd man out. He has a, a line called Invasion, and both of those guys have agreed to um, do on screen interviews. So we have a couple of them, and I think we'll be booking some more. And we're going to try for some other people, as you're well aware, because we we both have the same list. But just so everybody out there knows, uh, we got some good stuff coming up as far as interviews and content for the channel. So tune in. So I guess we'll get into some questions. Is that cool? Let's do it. All right. Awesome. A uh, big part, a uh, big thing I, I'd like to get into is I know your work from the past and um, you have definitely been on the synchronistic path and helping other people see it for well over 15 years now. And I think that's um, it's one of the things you're most known for as far as your fans and the people that have followed you over the years, right? There you go. FreemanTV.com. Um, so I'm curious how... You and I'm sure other people would like to know this as well, especially your fans already. How you how you got into NFTs and how um, what what led you into this? Was there a development from somewhere, or was you know how'd you get into the NFT part of the artwork? Well, I really got addicted to uh, alternative movie posters, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, right. They're all over the place, um, and. I, you know, I, I, I came up through art, right? My, my original artwork at 10 years old is probably the most famous artwork I've ever done. Right. So, see it. uh, ah, yeah. At, at 10, I, I developed this, this image and then I used this image to create a conspiracy theory that I still discuss today. I don't know if it was some sort of psychic revelation I was given as a child uh, or, and I won the art contest, nice. uh, but you know, um, so it's, it's been a part of my life, uh, forever. I, I thought I'd include the first blend, uh, where nice. someone actually drew my artwork, right? Oh, I see on the bottom there. I yeah. see what you're saying. Right, right. Uh, and then drew me, this is all pencil drawing. This is the original pencil drawing right here. So wow. I, you know, I love art. I love artists. And I, I went to college, uh, for architecture. Mm -hmm. in architecture you study art history uh so i have been studying art history from you know the minoans uh, through uh classical into cubism and i had kind of lost faith in art like where are all the great artists i mean right now i would put on the list of living great artists um, someone like well paul avali just died he would be on my list but he just passed alex uh, gray, alex gray yeah, oh, yeah exactly and, uh, you know, then I have to go back to Dolly because before this. And so what happened is I realized that most of the art 
artists were now trapped into pop culture hmm. and and you know that's where the money laid for art and so they had nowhere else to go but like a print like this uh escape for uh, return to mars uh, flash gordon now right. there's only 15 of these because it's the artist proof so and oh, there's wow. only 10 of these uh because it's the the copper version and these uh, are numbered and all hand numbered signed or? numbered oh wow uh, i actually uh contacted martin anson on this one and found that he still had them sitting at his house and i'm like well, get me one nice you know? send this to me and i love all of this art and uh so i i i as as a follower of all of these artists uh i started to note that they were mentioning these this thing nft mm. and then they'd give a little uh, teaser you know because all of a sudden these artworks would start to move and I'm like, what is this? What's going on? So that's what introduced me to the concept of NFT. And it made me realize that, you know, all the great artists are, are kind of trapped in the pop culture world right now doing alternative movie posters uh, or dead shows. If you're looking at like Android Jones or others uh, that I follow, like AJ Maste. Mm. Oh my God, I love his work, you know, and it's all getting displayed on, on dead shows and dead concerts. And uh, so, right. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. That's what led me there. Right, right. Yeah, because those visuals are crazy. I mean, talk about really bringing it visually to a concert or something like that. That's that stuff. I've seen some of that stuff. And wow, it's yeah, especially Android. Um, he's wow. He's crazy with the visuals and the things he's gotten into the VR. Now he's got, you know, all that uh, microdose um, VR, I think it's called. Um, yeah. It's, it's getting crazy. I, I love it. I love, I even want to jump into VR myself. I haven't gotten into it yet. I've tried it a couple of times, but I think we talked a little bit. Um, I would love to experiment with VR and the tilt brush or whatever is cool right now and get into it. Um, Sarah Finn, um, the artist Sarah Finn, VR artist, really got me into it recently. Like just a couple of weeks ago, I first noticed it. So yeah, I love how all this stuff is going. I'm excited to see where the tech goes next, um, maybe even like what the new phones are going to be capable of. I've been seeing some things recently where some NFTs and new phones, um, as you look into it, it's like looking down into something when you see the visual. So as you bend it, you see more of it as you look at, I don't know how it works. I don't, I don't know, but I assume it'll be like, um, you hit something and something pops up and there's like digital, you know, almost, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious how it's all yeah, going to work. Get but... the holograms. I mean, I've always wanted to be at the forefront of technology. And I think that's my dad's fault because, mm -hmm. well, I know it is right. Like dad was building nukes when I was born and he was highly into technology. Mm. And so in the seventies, he built the first color television and, and cut a big hole in our living room wall and shoved that giant cathode ray tube through those, <laughs> had to build this big contraption in the garage, almost the size of a, a rider lawnmower to hold just the tube of the television, you know? So we had the first color flat screen in the seventies, you know, nobody mm. had color television, right? Right, right. Uh, so then he built the first computer and the mm. Heathkit computer back in the seventies. And I started coding, and, you know, at, I don't know how old I was at this point. I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, some of my favorite memories are sitting there soldering with my dad. So when I smell solder, it's like nostalgic for me because right. we were putting the motherboards together and, and putting this thing together. And we built this computer and I'm, I remember asking dad, like, what does it do? And he says, well, it, it, it generates biorhythms. And I, I still to this day have no idea what he meant by that. Right, right. I, I got into coding at that point and I found it so fascinating because I could go in and I could put all this code in there and generate a random number game like roulette or a horse race or something like that. And of course, this is when there was just text, right? No imagery. Right. And so I would tell the computer what to say if something happened, if this, that, and then that, and, and, and then it would do it and it would, it would show the words that I actually had told it to say. And this was so fascinating to me that I just, I kept digging in, you know, and as computers came around, I spent <laughs> my entire student loan on a computer uh, when I went to college for the first time, uh, you know, two grand for this piece of crap that, you know, took 
all day to generate a single JPEG. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was into it. Like when I was in college, I wanted to be high tech. I wanted to be up to the levels of things that weren't there yet, like right. PowerPoint, right? They had no way of me giving a PowerPoint presentation in college. It didn't exist. You know, mm. there was no <laughs> nothing like this. You know, right. there were no Google images, folks. There was no World Wide Web to, to search. There was nothing, right? Uh, so I took two VCRs and I took the movie that I was describing uh, in my presentation on Maison Scene for my t film class. And I edited, you know, uh, VCR to VCR, a tape that yeah. then was edited right to my speech. So like a PowerPoint, I had the VCR playing in the background and I even had the characters in the movie, which was uh, Anthony Perkins from, uh, this was uh, his, uh, uh, Oh, I'm 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 not gonna remember the name of Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Oh, okay. And I actually had the characters, you know, responding to my lecture as I would say something. They would say, "Yeah, that's right." And I, right. I type it all, you know. And so it was it was mind boggling. So for me, I've always wanted to be on this, you know. So when I did finally give a PowerPoint presentation, I went and studied all of Google's PowerPoint presentations, and I put every trick in the book in it. So if you were to watch something like my presentation called Aliens from Hell, look at it, realize that, you know, there's an NFT in every moment right. <laughs> because I animated every second of that film. No one puts this type of effort into it. And there was no need for me to, except for I'm an artist. Right, so right. I, I spent months creating an hour presentation and then gave it live, you know, gave right. it live. It was really wild. So now that you're on the network or on the blockchain and uh, riding the Ethereum network. Modeling some... since 2014. Right, right. Uh, and I'll show the viewers some stuff at home just so they get a glimpse of what's going on. But I, I know you're on Foundation. Obviously, you know, you know no, it's no secret we're close friends and we got into Foundation um, together. You know what Magically. I mean? Right, right. Shout out to Vidian, uh, a.k.a. LSD Gummy Bears for all that. I'm very appreciative. So, but yeah, I think it's cool as uh, I'm showing these right now to everybody, but uh, there's obviously two pieces on foundation and anybody who's looking, they're sold. Uh, they've been sold for a little bit. More um, coming. Yeah. So very cool stuff. Uh, anything you want to talk about with them or describe them to anybody? I mean, feel yeah. free to let people know about them. Yeah. I mean, check this out. Like when you see this horse, uh, dark horse artwork and I, I this is the variant. And the variant has a few changes to it because it's my first NFT. I wanted to show honor to the classics of NFT. <laughs> Imagine that. I mean, our, our time spans are moving so fast that so now fast. we're already to classic NFTs, right? right People haven't right. heard of a non-fungible token yet. No. <laughs> but I wanted to honor that. So I altered my art. Uh, this is actually an art that I made back in 2008. And it really was something only I could do, I guess. Uh, because I was invited out to uh, perform the first ever all night ritual with the Mayans at the pyramids of Tikal, right? right. They're like, we're going to have the famous Freeman come out here and, and take care of this. And that was such a wild trip, such a synchronistic trip. If you watch Freeman in Maya land or My miracles in Maya land from Freeman, uh, you'll see like, this magical trip and how it happened. But so in this image, you see uh, the foreground is actually the pyramid complex. It's the place that you see in the movie 2012 where they all committed suicide. Mm. Well, that's where we were. That's the spot we were. And the movie came out. This was 2007 when I took this photograph. So in this artwork, everything is my own photography. So the foreground is the, the, the pyramids of Tikal entrance way. The horse is actually Blucifer, the, the Denver International Dark Conspiracy horse mm. that um, I just happened. I was hitchhiking and I got picked up by a FedEx driver who took me to the back of the Denver International Airport to make a delivery. And then there was Blucifer just like right there, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, when is this going to happen? So I get that shot. Uh, the tornado over Blues, for which you can almost not tell that's there, is a tornado I drove past. Mm. Uh, the moon is the moon over the pyramid uh, from the all night ritual at the Mayans uh, on the winter solstice. Okay. And then, as you see, fade in the background is Temple. That is uh, Palanque on New Year's Day after the Mayan ritual. So, all of those kind of 
you know, morph together in this message of, of resurrection, I guess. And so that's what, when I, when I decided to change this artwork and make it an NFT, I animated it. I cut it into a square because that's actually the way the classic NFTs were in, mm -hmm. in a square so that everything was universal. You could, you know, put an NFT anywhere and it always fit. Uh, that doesn't seem to matter now, but I, I did right. that just because it was my first NFT and I wanted to make it a classic NFT. And so then therefore I threw the Ethereum logo in there rising up mm. uh, <clears throat> with the lightning and the Ethereum all running off. And that's all done on Photoshop. You know, that's not uh, like video animation. That's all. I, I expected my NFTs to be animated GIFs. Right. And, you know, again, I'm a nerd, right? So right. the fact that an NF or an animated GIF just cycles infinitely forever and ever into infinite, infinite, infinity. Uh, you know, as long as ones and zeros are crossing their path, that thing will keep cycling whether you're watching it or not. Right. And so that's what I loved about animated GIFs. Uh, to turn it into an, an MP4 feels cheaper for me, honestly, but mm. uh, it's the same difference, right? But yeah, right. for me, my art needed to be animated GIFs and I, I'll probably do more of that. That's cool. Yeah, that's what's that's what's up. I like that. I know I like the idea how you those all those different pictures that you've layered them and put that into the to the artwork and then um, seeing uh, just because you were sharing the stuff with me as you were working on it, seeing how you developed it and then made the Ethereum piece move and, you know, come up and all that was it was cool to see you work that. Um, you're far more advanced in the visual field than I am. So it's been exciting. Um, to see how you're doing that. I'm, I'm also excited. Um, I'm excited to see what Gene does, you know, speaking of, um, we were talking about great painters that are still alive. I think Gene Esther yeah. um, from Metasabian is one of them, one of the rare cats out there. There's other people too, but yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool, man. I, I like the fact that um, it seems like you're, you're kind of like old school, but you're into some of the new school. Obviously, if you're into NFTs, I know you must have some crypto. I'm curious what your favorite crypto projects are, or what you like, what you're into. Huh. Well, like I say, I've been hodling since 2014, but I was never really into it. I was like you, uh, like many others where someone said, hey, you need to get Bitcoin. And I'm like, what is this? And of course, like you, I also turned down my first invitation to get some free Bitcoin. Right. And then finally, somebody's like, no, you're going to do this. They walked mm. me through the wallet. They gave me a Bitcoin or, you know, some of a Bitcoin, some Satoshis. Uh, right. Some say I look like Satoshi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if Satoshi was actually a person, right? Right. So uh, that was what, what began this whole thing. So I actually have had that, uh, those Satoshis since uh, 2014. But, you know, I'm still in that question. I'm still in the question as to, is this the complete lockdown of humanity or is this the, the freeing or is it both, you know, are we in a battle right now with crypto? Like mm. there's the government version and the people's version. I don't mm. know. And that's what I hope, you know, you explore and we explore here more on nifty dimensions is, yeah. is the levels of where this is going. Uh, you know, is it going to turn into the matrix? <laughs> you know? That's but, a good point. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's why this is so exciting to, to explore, to get the developers and talk to them and figure it out. Totally. Well, you know, it's, it's cool that you're bringing this up today because today is the day where the creator of Dogecoin just a few hours ago, I mean, he threw so much FUD into the crypto world just in one little interview or whatever. And he was saying it was all a scam and that it was a big ripoff by the elite who run the system. And it's all these things we heard before about the previous you know, system or the fiat system. And it, it definitely created a lot of FUD. I'm curious to see what comes out of it. So I guess uh, it's, I'll just let people know that while, while we're doing it now, um, one of the new sections of Nifty Dimensions on the channel, I'm going to be going over different cryptocurrencies, probably take one at a time. I'll do a Doge or a Kishu Inu or a Klikai or a Fag or even Cardano and looking anything from high cap to low cap. But I decided, I feel like it would just be good, good to do, um, keep, keep the viewers up to date on some of the coins. Plus, yeah, I guess we're all wondering right now, um, like I'm not, I'm not selling off any of my crypto. I don't care what kind of FUD comes through, even if it ends up 
I don't think it, it's, I don't, I know it's not going to end up being worthless, but even if it ended up being worthless, um, this is the kind of thing to, to see through. And I think a lot of people who were there for the earlier rounds, they already heard that it'll be worthless and Bitcoin will never be worth 10 grand and all this stuff. And they already heard that, or, you know, so I think, I think, It'll be a good thing. You know, I guess I'm as I, I don't know, I guess I probably didn't even go over this with you yet, but I've been thinking about it for a couple of days as I've been watching different YouTubers going over coins and seeing there's just there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of FUD. And I'm, I'm not going to be trying to shill anything on here, but I think going over more cryptocurrencies as a segment, you know, would, would be good for the channel. Nothing too long, but just little little bits here and there of going over the coins and seeing where we're at. I still have high hopes for Cardano. Right. Me too. And, you know, that that seems to be the coin of the people. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I, I keep my fingers crossed for Charles. Yeah. And Grayscale bought a ton of Cardano, too. So I think that was a big deal. Um, you know, everybody's saying, oh, it's it's the end. It's, it's going to be worthless. But then you see these mega, mega, mega multi-trillion dollar corporations or multi-billion dollar corporations buying crypto while everybody's saying, oh, it's worthless, don't worry about it. It seems like a super sale right now for anybody who you know, gets into it. But all, a lot of my friends, um, a lot of like um, some of my dad's friends at work, they've already given up or think it's worthless and they, they're like trying to get, get away from it. Everybody's running away from it. So it should be interesting. It's going to be here either way. I mean, the big the big money of the world wouldn't be investing so much into it for the future unless there is a reason. It's just my opinion. Um, with art. I mean, you and I, we've worked together on art. That's uh, true. And, you know, I, I spent, what, like 14, 15, well, I guess like 17, 18 years now uh, learning all these damn skills with Adobe and all of the different uh, levels of software that I've had to go through. I mean, every time I learn something, like when I started, you had to have a TV studio to, to, to make this, right? Uh, mm. And then all of a sudden that was obsolete. YouTube came along, Google Video came along, and all of a sudden you could do this. Um, so every time I've, I've been like right on the damn forefront, so everything I learn is obsolete within moments. <laughs> but it's you know, the us, Adobe man. has stuck around and you and I have produced some music. Yeah. Uh, you know, we finally were like, let's, let's get this album together. So we produced Molecular uh into the fire yeah and uh i mean let's show losing sleep because that's some good stuff man. all right all right yeah that's a good idea um previously the kevin spacey experiment hey, we changed the name about that oh, oh my bad i mean previously beep, his but, lawyer uh, called us so. oh right my bad uh now you know then we we changed the name to molecular and yeah i, I yeah let's let's let them check it out here's one from a few years back called losing sleep No. 
techniques and then I said go and that's what he did <laughs> you know what I mean like imagine that was your first project right I mean technically that was your first real video project that with animating and 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 cutting in and and keying and all of the little tricks and I mean yeah. that's amazing and of course the music guys if you're listening uh, gets quite esoteric and if you start to realize what we're actually talking about it's this new high science and it's you know particle physics and colliders and uh, ionospheric heaters and and sending transmissions to mars you know it's uh mm -hmm. it, you know the music really speaks if you're if you're in tune yeah even some lyrics um the norway talking about the norway spiral and all sorts of all sorts of weird things are hidden in there um traveling through the sun as a black hole uh, because some of the some of the um deeper astronauts of the world or or space travelers here on earth telling us about these distant insane things um have have tried to explain that the sun can very well be the other side of a black hole and so that was just kind of a fun thing um, I remember when we wrote that, the story was I was in one room, you were in the other, we're both working on different things, just kind of, I had the headphones on and you were working on the amp. For I the amp, the amp on, yeah. All right, yeah, right. So, and we were literally writing in the same key in the same tempo, we were writing the same song, not even hearing what each other was doing. And then he came in to me or one of the, however it worked. I, don't yeah, know. I came running in, I heard right. and I came running in. I said, let me just lay this down. And then right, you right. play that over it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that song was born so fast. It was crazy. It was um, weird. Yeah. It was magical. I'm a, I'm a giant believer that we do not write these songs and right. that when we're open properly, energetically, and, and we're able to be good vessels at it and we're well-practiced on our instruments, I honestly think that's how the good stuff gets written. And I think that song was a perfect example of high level magic or high level chi work or whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't want to cheapen it with words, but I guess I'm trying to. <laughs> well, let me cheapen it a little bit. Um, all right. You all can get our album on Amazon. Just look up Molecular Into the Fire on Amazon and you can get the CD. Uh <laughs> That's true. That's true. Lots of other stuff too, guys. Now, speaking of it, we do have uh, the Nifty Dimensions um, label on Bandcamp, actually. What we decided to do was... Um, because Nifty Dimensions has many dimensions, meaning many different avenues that we're traveling down to bring everybody arts and collectibles. Um, music is such an important one to me. So yeah, we're, we're, we're moving all this into different avenues and Nifty Dimensions is now the name of the Bandcamp page where it's basically a little label where our different projects and some other projects of friends and, and other artists are on there. It'll be building more as time goes on. It was down for a bit, um, I had a weird ambient sci-fi horror kind of vibe music thing called Leonardo the 13th. I made an album with it, put it on that label. It was okay. I think I could do a thousand times better. Um, but yeah, just so everybody knows, check out Molecular on there. And there's some other stuff on there as well. And hopefully if this year keeps going great, maybe there'll be some new Molecular music or who knows what we're going to be bringing to you. Maybe we have some surprises already in store. Just yes. saying. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're going to be selling a lot of collectibles on Nifty Dimensions as well. I have a lot of bonus posters, you know, I've been collecting them over the years and years. So I want to display those and sell them at a good uh, market value uh, on Nifty Dimensions. So there will be a collectibles place where you'll be able to come and actually collect the, the hardcore prints. The, you know, it's interesting with this NFT world. If you think about that, uh, there was an NFT that sold for $55,000. Um, was it the bull? I think it was bull run. It was, it was something like that. Uh, and the, the, the NFT sold for $55,000. There were two people competing over that NFT. Mm. And mm. so the guy lost, went to the artist and said, well, how much do you, or can I give you 50 grand for the painting for the right. actual art? Right. Right. So. The question is, you know, chicken and egg, would that artwork have been worth 50 grand if the NFT hadn't been worth 55 grand? Right. Would he have ever sold that artwork for 50 grand? Right. And then which one has more value in the future? You know? Right. The future is crazy. We're being in this part of the future already. And I can't imagine where you're talking about where it's going to go. But this would have never happened before. It, it wasn't possible. But I think that's what's interesting about the blockchain and about um 
smart contracts and ownership in a different way to where, I mean, I hope I, you know, I really do hope it all works out and I think it will work out. I think it's all being developed. I apologize, but I guess I'm just saying ownership and NFTs, even though they seem really expensive, and it seems like some people are like, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. And I've wasted, we have both wasted money on expensive NFTs that had little right. to no value anymore. Exactly. And I, I think that it's more fun to invest in NFTs of artists that you like, or maybe somebody that you become friends with and you, cause you like their art. You yeah, I each really, other. I really regretted not buying uh, Sophia the Robots Ooh. NFT. Like I knew, right? Like I knew in my soul. I've been following so Sophia since she became online. I would highly recommend watching uh, two robots debate the future of humanity. Oh, that's classic. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Yeah, uh, where Hans and Sophia. But when she put out her NFT or AI, I'm, I knew to buy it, but I had wasted money on that other one. And so then I didn't buy this one, you know, because I had already lost and I didn't want I knew it was going to go. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? But check this out. I'm going to go retro. Right. I'm going to do it the other way around. I have this computer from the 1990s, my very first computer, the one I was talking about that I bought with my student loan, which mm. ended up costing me like, you know, fourteen thousand dollars for this computer mm. <laughs> after all my student loan debts uh, because I never paid them. And, and then they finally got it. But anyway, yeah. uh, so that's a pretty expensive uh, piece of crap. <laughs> that I have right. there. But it has, you know, you remember the stories of the people that lost their Bitcoin, threw away their computer with 10,000 Bitcoin on it and stuff. Yeah, and, AJ is one of them. Right. And they're going around, they're digging in, in dumpsters or, you know, well, my computer doesn't have a bunch of Bitcoin on it because it's from the 90s. Uh, but it has my 3D art. There was this 3D artwork program that came out just for those three years that I worked with it. I didn't even know that. Uh, Ray Dream Animator. And so mm. I started making 3D animations back in the 90s because, you know, like I say, I like to be in the forefront. So what I'm going to have to do is rebuild this computer from the 90s. I can't wait to boot it up and see, you know, like what Windows version is on there. Is it still Windows right. 95? You know? Did you say, and was it a 286, a 386? I forget what you said it was. I think it's a 486. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So it's not, not too bad. It, it'll only take an hour for a picture to boot up on the for, screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead to, of four. To render one image. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I was going to render a video, that was like a week. Dude, these kids <laughs> don't know. The these kids don't even know how lucky they have it as far as fast internet. Um, drag and, and drop. Drag and drop. Uh, cell phones. Uh, the, the speed of the internet alone. They don't realize that what dial up was all about and how much we suffered and wasted hours of time, not just at home, but at work. Anything you had to do at work. Um, it was crazy. Literally, you'd watch a picture slowly go down the screen and it would take forever. And then until All cable night. modems, until cable modems and the cable internet started, and then it went to fiber optics, fiber optics and all, it was so slow that it wasn't really worth using. Um, you might be on like a BBS site or something really, really basic back then, or AOL, you have mail. Oh, I, I, I could, I could clear forever. AOL room in 10 minutes. You know, they, <laughs> <laughs> they did not want to hear what I had to say. I was a conspiracy theorist all the way back then. Right. So the moment I got into an AOL chat room, it was cleared out. Like, they were like, all right. Yeah. I did have one Illuminati contact me once on AOL and oh. tried to give me some secrets, but I couldn't answer mm -hmm. his questions at the time. Gotcha. Uh, but so I want to get these these artworks out of there. I haven't seen them in 20 years. So I'm kind of like doing a retro art scenario. So my next artworks should be if I can get this computer working uh, or get the floppy drives read will be mm. these these 1990 artwork that I'm really proud of and I can't wait to see again after 20 years. Uh, I want to release those. Nice. Uh, I even did some animations and things like that. Uh, and you'll be able to see the dates on these, you know. Awesome. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. And I'm really excited about uh, producing some more. Like, uh, I want to get the original Dark Horse out there. Mm. And, uh, of course, my um, my trafficking artwork. That one came right. from MondoCon when I went and met all the famous or favorite poster artists and, and got to speak with everyone that I ever wanted to meet. Uh, yeah in that world and uh so yeah i i 
I made an artwork with a good friend who is also on foundation as uh, unknown allies. Ah, seven, cool. seven, seven. Right, right. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> and we, we collaborated on, on this artwork. And of course, I, I wanted to bring a little bit of my Freeman TV world into the NFT world. Sure. And so that was the inspiration. It's one of those artworks you only know if you know, right? Yeah. Like you can look at it and just think it's a, a UFO coming in and abducting somebody out of a building. But if you know what that building is, then you right. Know. Uh. <laughs> yeah yeah that's true that is very true and because i know what the building is i'm going to move on to the next question <laughs> uh, we're going to keep it moving and this is one i like to ask everybody freeman so i'm sure if you've watched any of the episodes which i know you've watched at least a little bit um you will know that i need to know what people's favorite collectible or toy or poster or whatever whatever you were first into that gave you the bug to where you're still into it now. Um, curious, everybody's got their story. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, the first thing that pops into my mind is my 1976 Kiss poster where they're all dressed as the Revolutionary War and Peter Chris with his bloody bandage on his head. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had that one you know, smack dab on the wall next to my Velvet Elvis. I'll try to find that and share it with everybody that's watching later. It was a classic. See if I find it, it speaks to my heart for some reason, you know, in those Kiss records, like the very first record I got was Kiss Alive 2. Came home warped because I grew up in Florida. So mm. just driving at home got warped. Uh, but that was my very first record. And that feeling of opening that and, and getting the little special inserts and in double platinum, you get the platinum, you get to get the posters and all of those things. Right. So, but that was a little later. I mean, that, that was about the same time, right? Because that was 76 and, and then Star Wars came out, right? And I became a Star Wars fanatic like yeah. everyone did. Sure. Because it speaks to our soul. You know, George Lucas was, yeah, there it is. <laughs> and then the lenticular. Even um, though nobody could understand, unless they speak cert a certain language, <laughs> nobody could probably understand what that says back Japanese there. Japanese but... Star Wars. <laughs> right. But so, yeah, Star Wars, of course, struck my heart because it was the hero's tale. And I, I saw Star Wars 14 times in the theater. I mean, I stood in lines that went around the building nice. to, to go watch that movie again and again and again. And I really, you know, I, so I started, of course, collecting the toys and the cards, which I still have the cards. Nice. But like most of us collectors, I have the lamenting story of, of <sighs> leaving my collection in my parents' custody. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, they sold the house. All my toys were in the attic. First, I didn't even know they were selling the house, right? Like they didn't tell me, right? Um, I had already moved out. I was living in Kansas, going to Kansas University, you know, and, and then uh, they're like, well, we sold the house. And my first words were, where are my Star Wars toys? <laughs> Their right. next words were, oh, I was hoping you wouldn't ask. <laughs> that, was, that was Transformers for me, but I, oh my I feel God. you. Uh, I mean, I still have that Darth Vader lightsaber. I've been waiting to reunite it with the 12-inch the, the right. Darth Vader. I've had that <laughs> thing. I still have it today. Nice. And come to find out that you know, the parents didn't think anything of it. Uh, yeah. You know, and again, it's not that I could have bought a house with those Star Wars toys, which I could have. Yeah, uh, it wasn't that for me. It never has been. I kept them in great shape. I kept them, you know, because I love them, because I treasure them. They're my booty, you know, my bounty, my, my right. treasure. And I think like most, most collectors, uh, I kind of dream of like a, a storage war scenario where somebody purchases my storage unit and they find all of my records and posters right. and they, they, you know, it's a million dollars or whatever in there. Uh, I yeah. think most collectors have kind of that dream. Hell yeah. That's why we're starting the, the Collectible Preservation Society or the Collectibles Preservation Society. We let's get into it freeman because we need right. to tell these people what we're doing they need to know um the the eternal question collectors and i i'm sure some of you have asked this very question yourself especially with vinyl um posters or paintings or art which is when i die who's gonna get this great collection is it just gonna get scattered or sold off because it means so much to us as we collect these over the years my first record about when i was six years old uh, Led Zeppelin 4 on vinyl 
and and all the way through so that it means so much as to our history or or freeman has you should see his house he has posters very valuable collectible posters you everywhere. can't buy these you and you can't, can't buy them. you yeah, also you... can't find a spot on the wall to put another one because he's got <laughs> so many of them but the point is we started talking about who's going to get my super valuable records or nfts or posters or dogecoin say or bitcoin or whatever right like who's going to get it and and we've come to the conclusion that we want to start a cryptocurrency but we want one that has real usage and real utility and we think the ultimate usage and utility would be having it connected to preserving these things that we're discussing um any thoughts anything you want to tell the people about that yeah, definitely. I mean, like a vinyl preservation club where mm -hmm. your collection stays together and somebody can come and experience your world. I mean, if you wanted to sit and listen to either one of our record collections, it would take you years. It would. Right? Like if you dedicated yourself to it, you spent yeah. eight hours a day, you could maybe get through it in about five years. Right. Um, but you're going to have this sonic odyssey that you would never have. And it's a, you know, we, when we gather things, we gather that we love, that we, we want to share. And so, yeah, the idea of, of finding purpose for the cryptocurrencies, I mean, like you were saying, the, the guy saying Doge and even Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, it's a scam. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. So much um, FUD. So much FUD. Yeah, but, you know, what, what, everybody asks this question, you know, what is crypto for? Why are there Shibu and Shivas and, you know, Kishus and, you know, what, what do they do? Right. And they're, they're trying to find a purpose is what right. they do. And I think that this is, you know, finding these different purposes. Another purpose that I might look into is getting cardboard out of your garage. Mm. I have a feeling this is going to be a major issue for many people so if you talk about comment it. down below okay mm -hmm. because if, if, the, if you're living through 2020 2021 then everything's being delivered to you and this is going to be our future right so mm -hmm. we all have these amazon boxes and delivery boxes just stack and stack and stack and, and yeah. i can't get rid of the stuff fast enough i don't even know where to go with it i can't load my car up i mean i've got a car a truckload full of of cardboard <laughs> Maybe there could be a crypto that took care of people's cardboard in the garage. You yeah. Know? Hey, man, it's it's a real that's issue. A thing. Yeah, it's a real thing, <laughs> uh, for sure. Yeah, that's classic. I I think people coming up with new. I think crypto is helping people come up with new theories, new ideas, new things like that. I'm so excited that we finally are getting to tell people about this one because we've been secretly talking about it. Not even all the members of the Nifty Dimensions direct crew, meaning the people we work with here, artists and whatnot. Um, most of them don't even know about this yet because we've kept it so low on the lowdown that like we we are now just, we figured we'd wait and, but I think it would be good and I'm, I'm glad because it would be cool to hear from other people, um, see what thoughts they have or ideas. And I'm curious, um, anybody watching this, um, I know, you know, we're, the subscribers, we just started this channel and we're well aware that uh, we finally reached over 200 um, in about a month, which is really cool. But anybody watching, if, if you see this, we would love to know. Um, I would love to know personally which collectibles or things. If you have a story or something, uh, let us know below. And yeah, any ideas for this particular coin we're talking about with vinyl? Um, yeah, we, we would love to hear from everybody, you know, for ideas, right? I mean, I think it's cool just to, to get I the say, community flowing right now. I say we buy the Los Angeles Masonic Lodge. Hmm. This thing's like two blocks big and it's okay. just sitting there doing nothing. Right. And that's where the vinyl preservation will happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Man, what I was, love that lodge. It's a, it's pretty amazing. I've never been there. I've never been you there. You can't go inside. It's been closed for decades. Hmm. It's just sitting there. It's two 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 blocks of a building. You're talking about Hollywood, you said? Yeah. Hmm. Los Holly Angeles. LA is it's a fascinating area. Um, since you brought it up, 
something that really struck me, I, I was there about, I think it was about 2012 or 2013. We had uh, just done maybe a little later, maybe 15, but we, I was with a group. We had just done some of the soundtrack to a game called uh, Metal Gear Rising. And we were, we were called out to Hollywood and we got to do a gig at the Hard Rock and it was really cool. There were some great people there. Even Shavo from System of a Down was there and stuff like people were checking out this game and the premiere. Uh, but point is, we're at the Chinese movie theater and we're next to it. Directly next to it is a little shopping center that um, it has the Anunnaki gods with the pine cones standing over this, this big um, archway. And there's a left path that's closed off and there's a right path that's closed off. There is a sun water fountain in the, in the middle of it, looking like the sun and it's a giant water fountain. And then you go through. And the point of all this is if you take the middle chamber, or even if you don't, um, you get to the end and you realize it was a Babylonian ritual and it even is called Babylon court. Anybody in LA uh, that knows what I'm talking about or anybody that's been there, uh, let us know, because that's a fascinating little ritual right there. And as I was doing it, before I even knew what it was called, I had realized what I was doing um, just from looking into some of that over over the time. And and then sure enough, you get to the end of it and there's a little plaque on this on the end that says Babylon Court and it explains everything. So it's all real. It's all in Hollywood. And it's if you not guys want to know more about that, if you want to explore these esoteric adventures, I have traveled around the country filming and exploring these type of esoteric arts that are in art and architecture all around us, all over the globe, really, at freemantv.com. There it is. Freemantv.com. Uh, yeah. You know, I've been exploring this realm. Oh, you really want to go to my YouTube to get those videos and such. Free Man right. TV on YouTube. Yeah, because you're not going to see it here. You'll get a little, little dose here on Nifty Dimensions, but let's face it, um, that's not the purpose of this channel. So any Freeman fans out there understand that um, there's a different purpose for this um, whole thing, right? As far as yeah. what we're doing here. Um, this is so art. This is exactly. love. This is us finding our way into the new dimension. Right. Creativity. Hell yeah. Imagination, creativity, um, allowing yourself to be creative and feel free is so important. And in these times, like I, I'm sure I could have started something else and we could have we could have planned out this whole thing differently, but let's face it. And I've said this to you a hundred times, but there's nothing I could personally say or do that somebody like yourself or Mark Passio or even Bill Cooper, um, legends have already been saying all this stuff for so many years. Um, and it's, it's not because like, and don't take this the wrong way, but it's not because all y'all are so cool. It's because this is actually happening. And <laughs> the cool part about what you guys did was that you found out about it way before everybody else and you were trying to let everybody know. The downside to being in the future of that that I've noticed as being friends with some of you guys is how many people are regurgitators and uh, say the information as if they figured it all out for themselves. And because you've been doing it for so long, I think some of that, and this is, I know this is kind of personal, but it's also needs to be said, like, um, cause I don't, uh, we're friends, so I don't have to kiss your butt, man, but you're an OG as far as a lot of this stuff goes, uh, corporate symbols and all like, come on. Um, there are a lot of people that claimed to have figured that out and all, but if you go back and actually look and you dig, the, you do the digging and you do the research, you'll find that this guy right here was telling you about it a long, long time ago. I'm talking about the uh, Vav 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 and the Volkswagen symbol and all those things like that. Yeah, imagine when, when I did Corporate Logos, which was my first television show, a documentary on the occult meanings of corporate logos, I had to drive around Texas and photograph corporate logos because mm. there was no such thing as Google images. There was right. no way to just, so that's how old my work is. Like people look at it and they're like, is that on a VCR? I'm like, yes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, that, that's how old this is. Uh, but then, you know, tech started to develop. I remember when uh, one of the guys on the television uh, on Access had uh, animated lower third words, you know, that was sorcery mm. to me. I was like, how did you do it? He <laughs> wouldn't tell anybody. Nice. And meanwhile, I was the only one who knew how to run the green screen, right? Like even the technicians there didn't know what to do with it. But every day I went in or every week I went into that studio and I just 
you know, manipulated that green screen until it finally worked. It had an infinite knob, it had this knob that just turned, right? Like, hmm. where do you find the spot you need to be? You just keep turning it. It really does. And, like, right. <laughs> and so I would every week. And, and so usually five minutes before the show is going live on the air, I'm just sitting down sweating in my chair, like, oh, hi, and welcome to the Freeman Perspective. You know, like, right. uh, hold on, because I was my only staff, right? Like all yeah. the controls were in this other room. And um, but so, you know, I made the first documentary on corporate logos and their cult meanings. I made the first video on chemtrails. I made the first video on harp and weather modification. I made the first video on uh, Hollywood high profile rituals and those level of things that no one had ever covered before. And now, yeah, it's like just mainstream now. now everybody, it's, right. Uh, but they didn't ever go back and study my science to see what they were actually talking about. They just took the concepts and said, oh, yeah, of course, these uh, corporate logos mean something. Right. But if you went and found my work, you'd actually know what Bad. they meant. <laughs> but yeah. all right. So I have I have um, one more thing I'd like to ask everybody uh, to keep it to keep it positive and keep it clean. Um, I like to ask everybody if there's anything else they want to go over or talk to the people about or just anything, um, anything in general that you'd like to go over and talk to me about or talk to the viewers at home about, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to give people the opportunity to get out a last thought or anything they want to get across to people. So, All right. Well, this seems to be a wild opportunity for us and uh, especially artists, uh, you know, my, my art's never had value. Uh, because it was all digital. And so it, it was never, there was no value for it. So all of a sudden my world has value, you know, tens of uh, decades of work I have that suddenly has value. And so I'm really excited about that. But what it has shown me as I dug into the NFT realms and into crypto realms is the mindset, right? So, uh, you know, they, they changed the color of dollar bills in America to the colors of monopoly money. I don't mm. know if you guys ever noticed, but if you lay down monopoly money, it's the same colors as the, the current bills in the right. US. And to me, that's a mind game, right? That's to make you think money is play, right? It's just play stuff. We don't need this stuff anymore. And uh, so the mentality of, of our how we exist is, is, is more critical than the actual thing, right? So now we're in a point where people that got in early on, say, Ethereum and now have you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in Ethereum. So they're coming in and they're dropping 30 ETH on an artwork, you know? Right. That's uh, crazy, but I, I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, the whole mentality of the liberty of money, the ability to just, I've been saying this for a long time, that crowdfunding is something humanity never had before. We've never had this ability before. The attempt to be, to be able to get together and focus a, a goal with money, with finances, without a middleman, without a charity, without anything in between. We now have this ability with crowdsourcing and crowdfunding that we don't realize. And so I use often the example of the beer guy at the college game. So there's a guy at the college game. He ended up on, on television. He didn't mean to, I don't think, but he held up his Venmo number and said, I need beer. Well, right. accidentally, accidentally made a million dollars because everybody was like, oh, I'll send him a dollar. You know, I'll send him five bucks. But that's a said, happy accident. Exactly. <laughs> right. And then they gave it away. Right. What the? Oh, but, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, he gave it to charity. So, you know, whatever, however you feel mm. about that. But, Depends. you know, if, if you accidentally gave me a million dollars, you know, I, I'm going to I'm going to live on that. And I'm going to take care of my friends. I'm going to take. But the point being is how simple it was. To make a right. million dollars, right? And and so when you see people top drop in 220 grand on an NFT, you know, that's a house. Yeah. You can see that the mentality, the liberty of the concept of money is freeing. It's 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 breaking these barriers. Totally. And so I think this is gonna be something that really alters the mindset of mankind and the ability. If you've ever seen South Park, uh, the episode called Pine Box Derby where the aliens come and give uh, the, oh. the people of South Park space money. Yep, yep. And of course, that involves CERN and, yep. and them catching the particle. And again, watch Aliens from Hell. Um, right. And they give them all this space money. And so all of a sudden, with the space money, they're building water parks and, and all this fun stuff and everything right. they could. And the aliens, of course, cube planet Earth and say, yeah, we're going to have to leave them in, in stasis until uh, they 
don't believe money anymore. Right. So I see that mentality coming through this and this ability to be able to just, yeah, I'll drop a couple grand on that. You know, like right. you know, if those were dollars, it would be a completely different thing. Yeah. Even though you see the dollar value of the Ethereum. So I think that this mentality and, and the fact that we have this crowdsourcing power to, to send force where we want it is one of the biggest changes that's going to come from all of this. Definitely. I, I get that. I get that for sure. Well, everybody watching at home, I want you to know we're going to be going over tokens soon, Dogecoin, Klikai, Kishu Inu, all the way up to Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polygon, AMP. We're going to be getting into it here. Uh, I want also to everybody to please hit the like button, hit subscribe and the bell notification, share it with your friends, loved ones, anybody you think might be into this, especially any vinyl heads. If you know people that are in there collecting records like we are, we'd love to have more viewers in that arena because there's going to be more and more stuff. Vinyl. There you go. Yeah. Anything collectible and any recommendations, we're always happy to hear it. Um, Blockchain Heroes did a collab with um, Graffiti Kings about a week or two ago on some collectible actual figures that were um, resin. They were made of resin, I believe. Um, really uh, quality collectibles and things like that. Like if you see anything cool, we can't catch everything. Um, just like I told some friends on Twitter, um, we can't see every NFT. We can't see every collectible or record and, and not everybody can find everything. So we would love any heads up and we'll try to give you guys a heads up on what we find. And hopefully it's a little community that uh, just is able to find the cool stuff out there. You know? If you come to niftydimensions.com, you can scroll down to contact and just leave us a message there. Uh, so there that's the easiest way. Or, you know, of course, leave a message in here. Uh, but if you want to contact us directly, go to nifty, niftydimensions.com and just click on the contact link and boom, you're, you're talking to us. There it is. Awesome. Now, I want to I want to describe this exit video that we're going to play here because this is featuring Meta Sabians mm -hmm. and it is a song uh, that we wrote uh, No More Haunts. Right. And uh, the reason I want to exit with this is that the, the message of No More Haunts, although it sounds like a scary film, is really the fact that all of the old haunts are gone. All of the old ways are gone. All of the old places are gone. We've got to embrace the new because we have no choice. And we're moving into this new realm and we want to celebrate that transition, this movement and, and take it back for ourselves. And so No More Haunts featuring Metasavians even uh, is just a great way to throw that back out. Hell yeah. No, that's awesome. And yeah, that, so yeah, so here it is, everybody. Um, from 2016, um, we were the under the name Molecular Band with Bruce from Metasabian. Uh, here it is, No More Haunts. And Freeman, by the way, it was great having you on. Hopefully we'll do this again soon. And um, yeah, well, thank I'll be you. interviewing you, right? I wanna talk about your music, your upcoming album, uh, Darker. Well, cool. I wanna get, you know, so I'll be interviewing you. And Beautiful. yeah, man, thanks. I, I really, uh, I'm happy to finally be inside the nifty dimension. I know, right? Uh, Welcome. It's awesome having you here. here. Hell yeah. I think some of your fans um, from over time, it, it'll, they'll be happy to, you know, they'll, I think some of them will be really happy to see, to see you. Uh, Cause it's not always, not always easy to see you. A lot of times we hear you. So I think it'll be exciting. And, and hopefully some of them dig that you're getting into some new futuristic things and, you know, showing and maybe now I'll be known heading. more for my art. That would be cool, man. That'd be cool. But being known for sharing synchronicity and the understanding of it is also a great thing. And you should be proud of that, man, because you taught a lot of people a lot of great things about synchronicity and riding the wave of believing in life instead of being reactive and fighting everything. And that's that's a cool thing you've done. And that's, you know, that's probably why I speak about you so much on the show, even if you're not around. It's just because you've influenced me, you've influenced a lot of people and it, you've done a really good thing. So I hope they love you for both, but I definitely hope people start loving you for your artwork because you're really, you're putting in the work, man. And um, seeing what you've done to make the website for niftydimensions.com and everybody watching, if you see graphics here on this YouTube channel, on the show, wherever we end up um, in the long run, Freeman did all the graphics and all any, uh, to all this. So just so you know how we're doing this. And then I usually handle the video end and editing and, you know, trying to get it to y'all in a timely manner. So 
That is the machine we are now calling Nifty Dimensions, right? Hey, it's a magical being. Uh, if anything is speaking to synchronicity, it's the fact that this show exists. Totally, totally. And that's a story. Maybe we'll get into a little that, bit of that for my interview. But yeah, Freeman, it was awesome having you on. Uh, everybody else at home, hit the like button, subscribe, share, hit the bell notification. Come back. We will see you soon. And uh, here is No More Haunts by Molecular. Peace.